Well, we've wanted to have an autonomous car to hill for some time. It seems it's the very key to, to make that happen. We just thought it'd be fun to do it in a sort of completely unusual, something people just wouldn't expect. And people are so famous for cars, all types, all genres, motorsport of all types, all genres, cars from all over the world. We thought that the Mustang would be perfect. So. Well, we were looking for a partner to, to do this with and uh, and we were struggling to find one, to be honest. And so uh, I, I went to Cranfield University, I met James um, and I, I suggested it. And uh, well, he thought I was slightly crazy, um, but was actually totally up for the challenge. You know, he said, look, I mean, we're an innovation university. We've done crazy stuff like this before. We'd love to be part of it. So it was a partnership born right from the beginning. Well, there's two major challenges. One is uh, the car. It's a very old car. It doesn't drive like a new car. Uh, and secondly is time. With no car available, you have to find ways that you can accelerate the engineering process so that you don't lose too much time. Because basically, we have a start line, which was yesterday morning. So therefore we looked to simulation for a start, so we created a vehicle model of a 1965 Mustang, Siemens provided a track model and then we put the two together in order to create a simulation so that we could learn something of the dynamics of the handling behaviour of the car before we get the car. So that started the engineering process while we were still sourcing the car and figuring out what colour it had to be. Clearly we've ended up with a very, very nice uh, interior, this happens to be a special option of the period, but it is exactly as it came from the factory uh, in San Jose. Then once we get the car, the challenge becomes how well do, does our model and our understanding of the car relate to the car itself. That's where the second major challenge presented itself in that the dynamics of the car are both interesting and curious. These are not the terms that control systems engineers like. We then undertake a, a number of experiments to determine the handling behaviour of the car and we used our own test track at Cranfield in order to do that. Once we got the modifications under the car, we could do, then do that, so we start running the car and then we look to correlate our understanding from the digital world. And we have a new test track at Cranfield called our Muevi test track and we can use that for autonomous vehicle research. And so we set a number of paths on there and the car follows those paths and then we look at validating our simulation to see how accurate or inaccurate the simulation was and then we seek to correct each of the models so that we can better represent the behaviour of the car. Once we have that, then we're in a good position. So we got into that position about a week to go and then the car's engine started to misfire very badly uh, and we had all sorts of issues with the powertrain we had issues with the suspension and we had many other issues unrelated to any of the autonomy and the last gremlin well we hope the last gremlin but another gremlin we found yesterday on the hill which was a burst hydraulic hose uh, which was which was very unfortunate uh, but we've now fixed that overnight and now we're, we're we're back and ready to run again and we had a very successful run this morning so we wanted to hide the autonomy you could fill the inside with the robots um, but then the person can't ride in the car and, and really one of the things that we're trying to look at here is that you can have fun with autonomy and you don't need to remove the human behavior completely so all the controls in here we have matched to the period so the switches are off a 1965 Mustang it happens to be a fog light switch obviously now it's got somewhat more commanding presence in the car than it had back in the day so we, we've tried to blend it in blend the new technology with the old style um, just to give that sort of unique feel Cranfield is a large university but very, very specialist, so we, we work in the specialist engineering field and we're best known for our aerospace work um, and our automotive work, um, both of which are the longest running MSCs in the UK. Um, and so we've, we've had, a, we've had a, a, a strong relationship for a number of years. Uh, we do a lot of work in gas turbines, for example. But this, this, was, this didn't really lean on any of that, if I speak the honest truth. This is, this is really a new endeavour uh, in order to try and reach out to the new, the new generations of engineers, basically, and say, hey, look, we need you. Um, it's really fun to do, and uh, come and join us. Oh, well, I'm just 
absolutely over the moon with the well just the sheer interest and it's the interest from really technical people engineers asking us and our partners Cranfield here questions about how on earth how on earth have you done this crazy thing um, and also from young people that's what's so brilliant that something like this can really inspire the young people to say wow this is possible and then when we start talking to them about well it's about software and it's about digital you've suddenly turned a young person and the very important thing it's young boys it's young girls which are really interested and say do you know I might be interested in this industry and in this technology and that just makes me feel fantastic